Oh, that's a, that's a big one. <laughs> so if I try to summon, uh, like summarize the, the findings so far. So, so, so given the, the idea, first of all, so, so what is tracking? So basically people uh, tracking everything they, they wear and everything they own and wear. So, so one way to, to start is to look at the assets. If I look at the, the data from, from, from the Open Wardrobe project that I run, um, first of all, the assets we think, it, it, with assets I mean the garments that, that we have. And um, there's, on average, our wardrobes are roughly 180 uh, uh, pieces of, of, of garments, including underwear and socks, <laughs> uh, and then to a value of roughly 7,500 euros. And this is mostly West Europe uh, uh, participants. But uh, in terms of assets, in terms of like wardrobe content, there's a, a very large spread. So we might have minimalist wardrobes from something like 80 items up to my biggest one is 550 items. And smallest wardrobes uh, are something from like 2,500 euros total value to the biggest wardrobe is 30,000 euros. And uh, so, so as I see it in terms of assets, we have a lot of capital tied up in our wardrobes. But, but based on, on, on my experience and all the interactions I have with, with, with people and, and talking about the subject and topic in general, we, don't tend, we tend not to think of our wardrobes and, gar at war and garments as assets, but rather as consumables. So I think it's rather puzzling that we might have something like seven or 8,000 euros tied up in an asset class that we don't regard as such. Uh, and I think that's one of the kind of curiosities with how we regard fashion that we kind of tend to buy and then more or less forget, it, forget about it, that, that we have it. Then if we talk about use, which is the, the really interesting part of tracking, um, the, the, the first thing to note is that, that our wear count, like how many times cumulatively we have used different war, uh, garments, is a very like strongly long tail distribution, meaning that a f uh, there's a, a few garments who have a lot of use, and then there's like some garments in the middle, and then there's like lots of garments with very little use. So it's a kind of classical uh, long tail distribution in that sense. And, and some like key insights from this distribution um, is that first to note is that it makes sense to look at garments by category. So for instance, jackets and coats in, in one category, trousers and jeans as, and one, shoes as one. So not as like just anything in the wardrobe, but it, it, because they are tend to be rather different. But one pattern that's fairly consistent across categories is that it tends to be so that 30 to 50 percent, roughly, of items are used uh, four times or less in a year. So this is full year data, meaning like for the for the part of users that, which is a fairly large amount now, uh, who have been tracking for over a year. So I can take a one year window. So uh, four times or less in one year. That means. Uh, on average, every third month, right? So, so roughly 30 to 50% of our items are used four times or less in one year. So that's, uh, that's kind of describes one part of the, of the, like at the beginning of the distribution. Then uh, roughly 10%, roughly, uh, is used 50 times or more. Those I consider to be the kind of favorite items, the ones that you, you use. I mean, that calls for, and 50 is just because it's easy to think of, like you use it once a week, roughly. So, and in, in order to get to that kind of, those kinds of numbers, you really need to use something like on a regular basis. So roughly 10% of items get that kind of use a year. And then the rest are within what I might call like normal use between five and 50 or so. But, and, and also that section of the distribution is heavily skewed towards the low end. So, uh, so uh, the, if we take trousers and jeans, for instance, the median wears for a year is eight. So we, we, and this is typically fairly kind of, I wouldn't say shocking, but, but a bit uh, like we, we get a wake up when we look at these numbers that, that there's so many things that, that get so little use. And, and uh, the nice thing is that now I can actually see that, <laughs> see that. Of course, I've seen it for myself for five years, but I can see it now for other users as well. And one thing uh, to, to note is that I think it's important and valuable that with a wardrobe tracker, we can now see what I call exhaustive use. And I really encourage participants to, to track everything because there's, it's one thing to track, let's say, a favorite jacket or pair of shoes and so on, see it, where it gets. It's, it's, more, it's, it's another to track everything you have because that gives your collective demand for a certain category. So then you can say, oh, over a year, my personal 
demand, if you like, for shoes or jackets or trousers or skirts or blouses or whatever is like, let's say, 150 or 200 wares. And that's really valuable because that kind of tells us that it's capped at that, unless you really fundamentally change your way of, of getting dressed or so. Uh, that really kind of sets that no matter what you do, you are unlikely to go over that number, right? So that means that if you have a lot of items, they all fight for the same 200 potential wares. If you have only 10, they uh, are probably, uh, they're likely to get more wares. So um, in terms of use, uh, what the synthesis is based on the wardrobe data is that we have a lot of heavily underutilized assets such that are really rarely used in a whole one year period. And then um, that one to add to that is that not only are they underutilized, but they are underutilized to the extent that they are unlikely to ever get to their full potential. Meaning that if you have, if you have an item that might be designed for 400 wares and it gets, let's say, four wares in a year, it takes quite a many years of that type of behavior for that to ever get to its uh, design potential. And I think that's a, a key distinction. So it, time won't solve the problem in, in that sense. And then if we continue to, to cost, to what does this mean for consumers? Uh, that means that the, the, the result is that a large share of, of our wardrobes are actually very expensive items. Because what, what this translates to, if you put cost per wear on the y-axis in a way, and you put your cumulative wares on the x-axis like this, then you have this, this kind of uh, downward sloping like long tail distribution. So what you can see is that, that for the rarely used items, they become very expensive when you look at cost per wear. And uh, typically for durable, very, for like durable categories like jackets and coats and you know, shoes and, and, and jeans and trousers and so, uh, it's, it's typical to see realized 20 to 30 euro cost per wear. Meaning that every time a person puts this piece of garment on, uh, that's essentially costing them 20 or 30 euros, roughly. Just to give a picture of like kind of what, what the real cost is if you think of it like that. And, um, and um, then um, one, one thing to note about the cost per wear is that what tends to have a bigger impact on cost per wear is not the purchase price, but the actual use. So we have, I see uh, time and time again, a lot of items that, are, uh, more, that were more expensive when purchased that end up being uh, cheaper in, in actual use or costing less because they were used more, not necessarily. But, but the, the point is that if you want to drive down cost per wear, you should really look at use something and, and not at chasing uh, discounts. And uh, going forward, and uh, what I see from, from, from the use data is that the reason for this, one, one key reason, is that, that we might think or, or ask ourselves, why aren't these garments getting more use? Like, why aren't people just like using what they have and, and tossing what they don't use? Well, uh, one, one key problem with that is that, first of all, people don't know which portion they don't really use or what gets low use. But the second is, is a more systemic problem, and that is that we need, we seek variety. We, we want variety. There's a reason why we might have like, let's say 20 or 30 tops instead of four. We want the variety. Uh, now that is a direct odds with each and every item getting a lot of use. And this is something that we cannot solve on a, on a kind of person level, on a wardrobe level. That's something we can only solve on a system level. Because, because otherwise we would, otherwise the advice would be, look, just buy you know, four black t-shirts and like two pairs of trousers and that would be a very efficient wardrobe. But that's unlikely to happen. So one, uh, one, uh, one kind of takeaway for me uh, is that, that since we have this problem that half of our wardrobes is very underutilized and it's unlikely to change on a personal level, then, then the, the solution to it might lie in a more efficient system in more like distributing and, and using these resources a bit more collectively.